standing on the platform of truth. Pioneer Health and Missions. Hello, friends. So, as you see from your screen, the title of this presentation is The Church, God's Channel. Have you ever thought of the church actually being God's channel? Perhaps you haven't, but um, in this presentation, we're going to be looking at what the Bible says regarding this topic. Um, it's directed to those who desire to look at what the Bible teaches in regards to organization or how Jehovah operates to reach the masses. This, in fact, is just another Bible teaching, such as uh, the Sabbath or the condition of the dead, the state of the dead, what the Bible teaches regarding the second coming of Christ, and so on and so on. So, this is just another Bible topic, um, and we want to take a look at what the Bible teaches in regards to this. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So according to this passage, Jehovah is speaking to Abraham, and notice what he tells him, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Jehovah is telling Abraham, In your offspring, or in your seed, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why did Jehovah choose Abraham? Well, the verse continues to read, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham was a faithful, loyal, and obedient child of Jehovah God. And this is why he, as his offspring, was chosen to be a blessing to the nations surrounding them. Now how is this to be accomplished? Let's continue to read. In the 147th Psalm, we read, He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments, unto Israel. Just here we're reading that he shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Jacob is Israel, right? That was his name prior to um, God changing his name. Let's continue to read. He hath not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise Jehovah. So, the giving of His Word, His statutes, and His judgments to Israel um, was not so with any other nation. Jehovah chose, again we are seeing here, the offspring of Abraham, which later became the children of Israel, for Him to deposit His Word, His statutes, and His judgments. So again, who was His Word, His statutes, and judgments given to? To Israel, according to to these Bible verses. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, verse 6, we read, Keep, therefore, and do them. Why? For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. We shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So the responsibility here, one of the responsibilities laid out in this passage is to keep and do them. In other words, to observe Jehovah's sayings. Doing so would be their wisdom and their understanding. And by the, um, the nations witnessing their obedience to um, Jehovah's sayings, uh, we read that the expression would be this nation is a wise and understanding people. And that's what God desires for us as well. He wants the world to look at us as His people and express the same thought, um, that we are a wise and understanding people. Also notice Isaiah 43 verse 10, we read, You are my witnesses, said Jehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am He, before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. So here, according to this passage, we read, Ye are my witnesses, says Jehovah, my servant whom I have chosen. So another responsibility granted or given to the children of Israel was 
the preaching work or the witnessing work of them um, giving a witness of the miracles and the blessing of following Jehovah's sayings and teachings. However, unfortunately, we know that uh, Israel did not remain loyal to Jehovah God. And because of this, that is uh, committing spiritual prostitution, um, they eventually rejected the Son of God. And therefore, Jehovah had to divorce such people. Notice the following words by Christ Jesus, recorded in Matthew. Therefore say unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Here Christ Jesus is telling the children of Israel that the kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and it would be given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Obviously, this statement is allowing us to see that the children of Israel wasn't producing the fruits um, of them possessing the knowledge of the true God, His judgments, His statutes, and His word. But notice also that the term nation is used. Um, why a nation? Because that's what the children of God are. They are a nation. Sure, they're a church, a congregation, but they are a nation, a kingdom that eventually will possess um, the literal uh, kingdom of our Heavenly Father. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, we read, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. This passage as well is allowing us to see that God did not want to give up on Israel. His son wanted to gather uh, the children of Israel as a hen gathers her chicks, but they were not, unfortunately. And because of this, the following verse reads, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. So from here on out, even though Probation had not closed for the entire nation of Israel. Nevertheless, their house or their temple had been desolate because forever Jehovah had, um, um, had left its presence. Um, so the kingdom was finally taken from Israel. And so now as for a moment, God finds himself without a people or a nation to use to dispense his truths to all mankind. Who would he turn to now? Well, in the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 14, we read, Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles. For what purpose did he visit the Gentiles? Or one of the purposes, notice, to take out of them a people for his name. So one of the reasons why God visited the Gentiles was, according to this verse, to take out of them a people for his name. And how did Jehovah visit the nations or the Gentiles? Well, it was through his son, Christ Jesus, how he visited the nations. Notice what he did, the, the work of the Christ. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the holy spirit have given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen so we see the same pattern is being followed here as jesus both began to do and to teach and after he ascended through um, holy spirit he gave commandments. And unto who did He give commandments to? Well, the verse tells us that it was to the apostles whom He had chosen. Now, as the apostles um, received these truths from Christ Jesus, obviously part of their responsibility of them following and living in harmony with that Word and with those teachings was also given the responsibility to proclaim it to the world, right? In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, 
Notice what we read. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Here we read the experience of the followers of the Christ through the teachings of the apostles that such ones continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That is, they continued um, in the teachings that they were receiving from the apostles, which were not um, the apostles' doctrine because these teachings did, did not originate with the apostles, but rather with um, God Himself giving it to Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus giving it to the apostles. And now the apostles are in the work of um, sharing these truths with the masses. Um, here we find those who are now have formed into Christian congregations. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 4 and 5, we read, And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep, that were ordained of the apostles and elders, which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith, and increased in number daily. Here, according to this context, is Paul and Timothy traveling throughout the congregations that are found in these cities um, for the purpose of handing or delivering decrees to the congregations for them to keep um, that were well put together by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. This helped them to be established in the faith as the verse reads there. And what was the result? Well, they increased in number. So it was a blessing for them to receive these decrees or documents. Now we also know about Saul being chosen by Christ Jesus. And what can we learn from that? Let's look into it. In the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 6, we read, And he, this is referring to Saul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Here Christ Jesus appears to Saul. Saul tells him, Lord, what will thou have me to do? And Christ Jesus gives him instruction to go to the city where the brothers are at, and there he would receive instruction on what he ought to do. So, Jesus is not bypassing what He Himself established, and that's the, the establishment of the Christian congregation. So, so far, what have we seen? Let's um, review. One, Jehovah chooses the descendants of Israel to bear His truths to the nations or the world. Number two, Israel becomes apostate, and at last Jehovah replaces her with the Christian congregation. Number three, Jehovah selects the apostles through Christ Jesus to take His truths to the nations, a people bearing forth fruit. Number four, Jehovah gives or reveals His truth to the apostles and elders of their congregation for them to share to the world. Decrees are given to the congregation, and these become established in the faith and increase. Finally, number five, Jehovah chooses Saul. He leads him to the congregation to receive instruction on what to do. He later becomes the Apostle Paul. And all these doings that are being done in the Christian congregation are through Christ Jesus, um, God's begotten Son, of course. So, this is what the Bible teaches. This is the pattern that it outlines uh, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament how Jehovah chose a people there um, in the beginning of time to use such people to reach the masses. And when these people turn out to be unfaithful, well, God turned to the nations or to the Gentiles and gathered for Himself a people so that He can use in, in like manner. This is what the Bible has to say. But we want to also look at uh, some comments from the testimonies to see what they show in, in, on this regard. So let's read a few statements. Notice, 
through the Jewish nation, it was God's purpose to impart rich blessings to all peoples. Through Israel, the way was to be prepared for the diffusion of His light to the whole world. The nations of the world, through following corrupt practices, had lost the knowledge of God. Let's analyze this, this statement. It's saying the same exact thing that we have seen in the Bible. It was through the Jewish nation that it was God's purpose to impart rich blessings to all peoples. Again, through Israel, we read, the way was to be prepared for what? For the diffusion of His light to the world. The nations of the world, once again, through following corrupt practices, had lost the knowledge of the true God. Let's continue to read this statement. Yet, in His mercy, God did not blot them out of existence. He purposed to give them opportunity for becoming acquainted with Him. How? Through His church. He designed that the principles revealed through His people should be the means of restoring the moral image of God and man. So we see the same thought being expressed in the testimonies. They're not con contradicting whatsoever the Bible, um, the Old Testament, nor the New Testament, is expressing the same exact teaching that we have seen laid out in the Bible. Now concerning the Christian congregation, let's read. Acts of the Apostles 122, paragraph 3, we read, Many have an idea that they are responsible to Christ alone, for their light and experience, independent of His recognized followers on earth. Jesus is the friend of sinners, and His heart is touched with their woe. He has all power, both in heaven and on earth, but notice, but He respects the means that He has ordained for the enlightenment and salvation of men. He directs sinners to the church, which He has made a channel of light to the world. This is why we found in the, in the New Testament how Jesus referred Paul to uh, the congregation because it was him who um, originated this arrangement, right? The establishment of his church and he respected what he had established. So what can we take so far from these statements that Christ doesn't operate the way many people might think? Um, we have the Bible to instruct us. The Bible is a light, and we must follow um, that light. Um, we see how He operates. We see how the Father and His Son operates. Again, with Paul, or Saul, rather, he was um, directed to the congregation. So we can expect the same thing because Jehovah does not change, and neither does His Son, Christ Jesus. So we can um, um, be confident that He still continues to work in the same way that he has always worked. In this statement we read, He, Paul, was one whom Christ intended for a most important work, one who was to be a chosen vessel unto him, yet he did not personally impart to him the lessons of truth. He arrested his course and convicted him, but when asked him, What wilt thou have me to do? The Savior placed him, in connection with his church, and let them direct him what to do. Do we have the same mental attitude of the apostle? How he was humble enough to go to his brothers and receive instructions from his brothers? Or are we of the sort that uh, we think we don't need to consult our brothers that are in the same line of work that we are? There's much to learn from of the accounts laid out in the Bible. And we should be following um, the blueprint. And this is, of course, the Bible. And the next following statement reads, All is done in the name and by the authority of Christ, but the church is the channel of communication. So again, Christ Jesus uses the congregation to as a channel of communication. I'll tell you, my brethren, the Lord has an organized body through whom He will work. So the purpose of this uh, brief study was to share with you all that Jehovah chooses a people and to this people He gives His oracles of truth so that these people can 
accomplish the work or the task of giving his message to the world. He did it back in, in the times of the Hebrews, and he did it um, when these um, proved to be unfaithful. He chose the, the Gentiles, and he has done it as well um, here at the end of the world. He has chosen a people, and to this people he has given his truths. So um, we will touch on that in a later presentation, but um, in this presentation, once again, um, the focus was to show you that the Jehovah operates through means of a people and uses such people as a channel to communicate His truths to the world. Standing on the Platform of Truth Pioneer Health and Missions